So let's review some of the anatomy of the larynx using this laryngeal model. Just to note that the structures are slightly bigger in representation on this model than in the real body, but that just allows us to see things a little bit more clearly. Before we move on, it might be a good opportunity just to pause the video and see if you can identify the structures that have numbers on them before we move on to subsequent parts of this recording. So what we can see here is obviously the mental protuberance of the mandible and we just see the tongue peeping up at the top. And if I tilt the model back just slightly, that brings our hyoid bone into view and a series of structures just below that that are effectively the, the larynx. And as we know, at the point of the lower part of the, the cricoid cartilage, which is just here, uh, we continue into the, into the trachea. So the focus of this video really is, is, is going to be on, on this part of the, uh, of the upper airway. The hyoid bone uh, is an unusual bone. It's not got any articulations with any other bony structures. It's C-shaped uh, in uh, appearance and is deficient posteriorly, so it doesn't go all the way around. And it doesn't have any bony articulations, but instead is suspended to a series of bony structures through a number of muscles. So running upwards from the hyoid bone, we have a collection of muscles that connect the hyoid bone to the bones of the mandible and some of the structures that form the base of the skull. And these are known collectively as our suprahyoid muscles. So there's a series of muscles that are running from the hyoid bone more superiorly, and we call them the suprahyoids. We also have um, a series of, of muscles um, running from the hyoid bone inferiorly uh, and these also help to anchor the hyoid bone or attach the hyoid bone to some of the cartilaginous structures of the larynx but also some of the bony structures much further down in the neck and this model doesn't demonstrate all of those infrahyoid muscles or suprahyoid muscles so the hyoid bone um, by way of its attachments through these supra and infrahyoids can move uh, it can move both in a superior direction, but also can be lifted slightly anteriorly as well by some of the suprahyoid uh, supra muscles. The infrahyoid muscles will act to balance out those actions so that we don't lift the hyoid bone too far forward or that we are then unable to return the hyoid bone back to its, its uh, sort of resting position. So the effects of the suprahyoids with the infrahyoid muscles are really helpful for uh, stabilising the position of the hyoid bone, but also allowing it to, to, to move upwards uh, and also to, to move down and back into its original position. Because the laryngeal structures are effectively suspended um, from the hyoid bone by this ligament known as the uh, thyrohyoid membrane, so this connective tissue structure here. The position of the hyoid bone will also determine the position of the laryngeal structures. And this is really important because we know that there is a part of the upper airway in which we share food and fluid and movement of air. And we want to be sure that food and fluid go down into the laryngopharynx and the esophagus and that air is directed appropriately into the, the, the larynx and then the trachea. And we can't do both of these things at the same time. So it's important that when we're swallowing food and fluid, that the process of swallowing will cause elevation of the hyoid bone and slight anterior displacement. And as such, the larynx is also elevated and moved slightly anteriorly. And this lifts it away from the laryngopharynx, which we know is the part of the pharynx that runs immediately behind the larynx. And as such, when food and fluid are directed through the oral cavity and into the oropharynx, uh, they are safely being diverted into the laryngopharynx and then the esophagus, as opposed to inadvertently going into the larynx. So the hyoid bone and its movements are really important for the position of the larynx, which needs to change when we're swallowing food and fluid. So we've introduced one of the membranous structures that's part of the, uh, of the larynx, 
We know that the skeleton of the larynx is effectively made up by a series of ligaments or membranes and cartilages. And while the hyoid bone is important in supporting uh, the function or the safe function of the larynx, it is not a con a considered an actual structure of the larynx. So we've said that the um, membrane that suspends the, the larynx from the hyoid bone is, is this one here, which is our thyrohyoid membrane. And that attaches the hyoids to this extensive shield-like cartilage, which is our thyroid cartilage. And remember that the thyroid cartilage isn't called the thyroid cartilage because the thyroid gland sits over the top of it. Um, remember that the thyroid gland is actually found uh, inferiorly to the thyroid cartilage. So the thyroid gland is very much uh, a more inferior relation. The thyroid cartilage is um, effectively two flat laminae which are joined in the midline. So normally there wouldn't be this, this, this visible line between the two halves. Uh, but we do have this sort of central prominence where they meet in the midline, which is the laryngeal prominence or what is known colloquially as the Adam's apple. And that's a really important palpable um, point of anatomy, which we can use when we're examining patients next to determine one, where is the thyroid cartilage and therefore work our way down to identify where we might be feeling other parts of the anatomy of the neck that might be uh, important for us to palpate. Remember that the thyroid cartilage, if we were to come laterally to the left hand side, has a superior pole and an inferior pole. And this cartilage is not a continuous ring. It's deficient at the back. So when you're looking at, say, cross-sectional anatomy of the, uh, the airway, the larynx, if you see a complete ring of cartilage, then you're not looking at the thyroid cartilage in cross-section. You're looking at another cartilaginous component, which we'll come to in a second. So the thyroid cartilage is here and the thyroid cartilage sits on top of the cricoid cartilage. So this is the cartilage that is a complete ring. And we can see this extending all the way around the back and it is continuous onto the onto the left side, which is hidden by some of the structures that are um, apparent on this side of the model. And the cricoid cartilage has a slightly higher back than it does the front. And that's why often it's described as signet ring in, in uh, appearance. There is an articulation between these two cartilages um, at the inferior pole of the thyroid cartilage uh, and with the cricoid cartilage, and that's called the cricothyroid uh, joint. And that's a synovial joint. Uh, and that um, is important for allowing a tipping forward of the thyroid cartilage on the cricoid cartilage. So if you imagine the cricoid cartilage uh, stays very much horizontal, there will be certain muscles or a muscle in particular that can act to tilt the thyroid cartilage forward at this joint here and that has a role in increasing tension of the vocal cords uh, which have an attachment on the inner surface of the thyroid cartilage here. Connecting the thyroid cartilage to the cricoid cartilage we have this other membrane. This is the cricothyroid membrane which is slightly thickened in the middle and then called the cricothyroid ligament. So that's number 11 just there. This is an important palpable uh, structure of the larynx um, because in, in fortunately in very rare instances, this may be a point of entry into the airway should the vocal cords, which would sit about this level, but obviously deep to the, to the thyroid cartilage, should the vocal cords become swollen or obstructed, uh, for example, by a foreign body, and as such, uh, the patient can't breathe air through the larynx into the trachea and into their lungs. So if there's some form of obstruction here um, that similarly means we can't get a tube in through the mouth or a pharynx down into the larynx and trachea, because again, we can't get the tube past a blockage of the vocal cords, then we may need to form some form of axis that takes us beneath the vocal cords. And that's doing something called a crack or thyroidotomy. So a crack or thyroidotomy might be an emergency airway procedure that has to be undertaken in patients who we describe as can't ventilate, can't intubate. So they obviously can't breathe themselves because of the occlusion and we can't help them either by trying to ventilate them with a, a bag valve mask and we can't help them by sticking a tube into their 
trachea and therefore ventilating the lungs because we can't get the tube through the obstruction. So a cricothyroidotomy uh, may have to be, formed, uh, very, be performed very quickly to prevent the risks of hypoxia. Um, and to do that, you're relying on feeling the surface anatomy of the front of the neck, noting the laryngeal prominence or the Adam's apple, sliding your finger down the midline of the neck and feeling a point at which there is a, sp a slight springiness under your finger uh, and the firmness of the cricoid cartilage just after. And once you have identified that cricothyroid membrane, um, you would effectively create um, an opening into that um, uh, membrane using a scalpel and then put a, a small tube in there that just allows the patient to receive oxygen uh, and also to breathe out carbon dioxide. That will be a very temporary procedure, uh, just buying you some time until either you can do something about the immediate um, laryngeal obstruction or you need to put in a more permanent uh, or sort of longer lasting uh, version of uh, surgical area, which would be something like a, a tracheotomy and then a, a tracheostomy where you leave a tube um, that sits um, in the front of the neck and goes into the trachea. And that then can be uh, attached up to a, to a ventilator. So cricothyroid uh, membrane, an important palpable part of anatomy uh, and has some uh, applications to certain types of airway management.